How to make a vintage Bassett Loke steam plant work again. Part 6. Some new workshop tools, repairing the generator and painting the flywheel. Starting with the new workshop tools, in this case this is not a new workshop tool, it's a very old Minicraft drill. But unlike the one that I have already, which is smaller, this one is a good bit bigger and it's almost brand new, it's never been used. So now I can use one in each hand. This is a Minicraft sander and I bought this a few years ago as part of a set from the auction site that we all know and love called eBay. And this is a very small jigsaw. I'm using my variable power supply as you can see I can speed up and slow down the blade. I've had this set for a few years and never used it because I don't like the coiled leads on the end of the tools. So anyway using this piece of birch plywood which is quite hard stuff I'm going to see whether this small jigsaw is up to the job and it appears to be okay. It cuts the wood fine. The normal power supply that I use to power my existing Minicraft drill is screwed to the wall and it's a really old power supply from a 286 computer from probably about 1993 and amazingly it still works perfectly. Briefly in the last episode I showed you the generator and the problem with the generator is there's far too much shaft movement end to end on the armature that's because there's a part missing which I'll have to remake it's only a simple bush. This is the other end of the armature. This is the commutator. In this clip I'm cleaning the commutator with a piece of scotch Bright. And I'm doing this to ensure that I get a good electrical contact between the moving parts. This is a view of the front bearing of the generator. It's a bit dirty, but look, it's got an oil cup on it. That's very useful. I'll take this opportunity to give the front bearing a bit of a clean up. I have a couple of tins of something called maintenance spray. It's not dissimilar to WD-40, but I would think the formulation is different. Here it is, maintenance spray. What I need to do next is temporarily assemble the generator to find out how big the bush needs to be that I'm going to fit on the shaft at the front of the armature. On a job like this I really wouldn't bother measuring the distance between the armature and the front bearing. I can just look at it and with my calibrated eye I should be able to estimate the size required. In this clip I'm using my micrometer to measure the diameter of the shaft and I thought it was going to be an eighth of an inch but it isn't. It appears to be metric, so I would think that this generator probably originated in Germany. The style of it is very similar to a tin plate car that I have, and that was also made in Germany. I saw a TV program about model railways and steam toys, and a whole section of this program was dedicated to the life and times of W.J. Bassett Loke. Before World War II, apparently he used to import quite a lot of things from Germany, but then they went and invaded Poland and spoilt the hobby entirely for quite a while. It was mentioned on the TV programme that the bad feeling caused by World War II made it so that Mr. Bassett Loke stopped importing from Germany and started manufacturing in England. I saw this TV programme which was very interesting because it also featured Frank Hornby of Hornby Double O and Hornby Railways and Meccano, a really good TV program, but it is a while back, so I may have some of the facts distorted. Back to the job now, I haven't described what I've been doing here because it's obvious. The usual process of face off, centre drill, drill all the way through and part off. And before anybody writes in, yes I am aware that I need to grind my parting tool at a slight angle so it parts off cleanly, but it doesn't matter because I can reverse the part in the chuck and face across the front. I made this bush from a piece of brass, and brass is not a good bearing material, but it will be fine for this. I put a washer on the armature shaft first, and then I put the brass bush on that you've just seen me make, and now it's time to fit the armature back into the generator, and to my eye that looks about right. What I'm doing here is trying the other end in position to make sure that it's not too tight. I often hold a screwdriver in my hand all the time when I'm doing little jobs like this, it's a force of habit. Note to self, when making a video, don't do it. I'm hoping that when I screw this back together, there will be just enough end float on the armature and it won't be tight. Now where's that other bolt gone? Ah, uh, oh, yes, here it is. The slots in these small cheese head bolts are a perfect fit on the end of the screwdriver, which makes it a lot easier to put it back together. Time to lubricate the bearings with some of my special oil mixture. This feels fine to me, the end float is about right and it's time to test it. I'm going to use my new Minicraft drill for this. And it works. By spinning it with the Minicraft drill at quite a high speed, it is generating one volt, which will be fine for some LEDs. 
I've turned the lights out so you can see that the only illumination now in the workshop is coming from this small red LED. In this clip I've turned the light back on and you can clearly see I've fixed two LEDs to the generator. Yesterday I had a visitor. The man brought a steam plant that he'd bought via eBay. It was a 504 boiler and a number 10 steam engine with reversing gear and a small generator. The engine was beautifully made and ran superbly. The big problem with small generators is the speed they have to rotate at in order to generate a usable voltage. We connected an airline to the engine and the speed it had to go at to get one and a half volts out of the generator was far too fast. Anyway, back to the job. It's time to paint the flywheel. This is Humbrol enamel number 19. Red gloss and it's almost post office red I think. Don't forget before you start painting, always stir the paint thoroughly. I've speeded up the video as a general precaution against any viewers slipping into a coma. So I'm going to stop speaking and just let you watch the painting happening. And this will be accompanied by some of my music. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. This one's called The Ballad of Sweet Annabella.